It's a beautiful afternoon for baseball in Atlanta as we welcome you to Sunday Braves. Today at Turner Field, we wrap up our three-game interleague series with the surging Baltimore Orioles. Sunday Braves on Fox Sports South is brought to you by your Atlanta Hyundai dealers. Make every Sunday a Hyundai Sunday on Fox Sports South. And hi again, friends, with Joe Simpson and our long-lost pal Tom Glavin. Chip <laughs> Carey back at the ballpark. A tough night for the Braves last night. They lost a one hitter to Jason Hamill and the Baltimore Orioles. But, Tommy, that wasn't the big story. Brandon Beachy left with injury, and now the Braves' rotation in a state of flux. Yeah, it really is. And, and it's it's a twofold loss. It's a physical loss, and it's an emotional loss. The physical side, obviously, what Brandon Beachy has been doing for this team as a pitcher, he's established himself as one of the best young pitchers in the National League. And then from an emotional standpoint, I think he has established himself the same way amongst his teammates. Tim Hudson, obviously, is the ace of this staff. Brandon Beachy has been slowly progressing to being that kind of guy. And the Braves have a feeling every time he takes the mound that they're going to have a chance to win. So they're going to have to replace both of those things somewhere. Jair Jurgens is going to get an opportunity to do that in Boston. But this is definitely a situation where somebody's going to have to pick up the slack. And, Joe, with uh, Freddie Freeman still having the finger discomfort, somebody has stepped up for him at first base, and that man is Martin Prado. Well, the guy that always seems to step up for the Braves, no matter where the need is, is Martin Prado. He has established himself as maybe the best and most versatile player on the Braves team by just virtue of his ability in left field, at third base, and as we saw a couple of nights ago, at first base. He'll be at first base today, and he's very comfortable over there, too. Great plays, left and right. First and third, doesn't matter where you put Martin, he's going to do something to help you win. He's a pro's pro, and hopefully Martin Prada will have a big day for the Braves as they try to win this series outright from the Baltimore Orioles. Stay tuned, the rubber game is next. Randall Delgado takes the ball for Atlanta here at Turner Field. In Atlanta, sunny skies, light breeze blowing ever so gently out toward right as the Braves try to take two out of three from the American League East. 
Baltimore Orioles. No Brian Roberts. He gets a day off. So Robert Andino will lead off for Buck Showalter's squad. Chris Davis is on a hot streak. So's Adam Jones, the center fielder. Wilson Bedemitz, a former Brave, playing third base. And we'll get our first look at a man from Taiwan, Wei In Chen. He's the starter and bats ninth. He'll be facing Braves right hander Randall Delgado, making his 13th start on the year, 4 and 6 with a 4.34 ERA. Last time out against the Yankees, suffered a loss, going five innings, giving up five hits, and a career high six walks. So that's something he's going to have to fix here today and try and get deep into the ballgame to give this bullpen a break. And his four keys to success is in part what Tom was just saying about uh, cutting down on the walks. He would get ahead of hitters against the Yankees, but he wouldn't finish them. Today, hopefully, he'll be able to do that without going into deep counts. And the way he's swinging the bat, he comes into the game hitting 300. He's 6 for 20 on the year. And the way the offense is struggling, maybe he needs to drive in a couple of runs and help out. Here's a look at Atlanta's defensive lineup for game three of the series. Diaz Bourne and Jason Hayward from left to right in the outfield. Good to see Chipper back at third base. Martin Prado's done a good job for Freddie Freeman at first. And with the left hander on the mound, David Ross gives Brian McCann the afternoon off. Also a day game after last night's night affair. A look at the umpiring crew for game three of the series. Not the best view <laughs> of DJ Rayburn. However, thank goodness, thank goodness it wasn't a night game. Yes. <laughs> Jim Wolf, Daryl Cousins, and Ron Culpa all on the base path. We're off to a flying start. Tom Glavitt is back in the booth. And here we go with a chance to beat Baltimore again today. So glad it was that wide center field shot, too. <laughs> okay, better stop there. Here we go. Here's Andino. Yes, yeah, a good idea. Baltimore's a good club, folks. The game and a half behind the Yankees. And Delgado. This is a little low with ball one. And quickly, two balls, no strikes. Drive toward right by Jason Hayward will grant it. And Dino lines out on a 2 0 pitch. One down. Ryan Roberts will say, well, okay, that just must be the spot in the order because he's hit some shots in this series and right at people on many occasions. But the Orioles are, they, they know what Delgado did in his last start six walks. They're going to be aware of that. They're going to make him throw the ball over the plate today. There's the first pitch strike to J.J. Hardy, the shortstop. J.J. one for eight in the series. This ball popped up. Long run, Martin Prado. Long run for Hayward. Martin makes the catch over the shoulder. His first start was at first base. At first base was Friday night, Tom. And when the Braves went through their pre-batting practice fielding drills, he, Eddie Perez was yelling at him to get over to first base. He goes, "Hey, it's a piece of cake." <laughs> it might be for him, but it's not for a lot of guys. But I mean, you know, we talk about Martin all the time and his value to the club, uh, obviously from an offensive standpoint. But his his defensive value value valuability to this club goes unnoticed sometimes. He can play a lot of positions, and he plays them all really well. Chris Davis doesn't normally play right field, but you wouldn't know it, guys, from the way he's handled that position in this series. He's made a couple of really good plays. One excellent diving catch that I think even surprised him. He was all grins after that. One thing he can do is hit, and he hits this one hard and out to left. Matt Diaz makes the play, and a good start for Randall Delgado. Seven pitches subdues Baltimore in order in the top of the first.
Day Sunday here in Atlanta. And a good start for Randall Delgado. Baltimore retired in order. Here comes Freddy Gonzalez's lineup. And the homestand and series wrap up. Couple of changes for you. Look at where Chipper's hitting. He's back in the three spot. Day off for Brian McCann. Dan Ugla, Matt Dias, Jason Hayward now sixth with Ross Simmons and Delgado the lower third. They'll be facing left-hander Wayne Chen of the Baltimore Orioles, making his 13th start of the year, 6-2 with a 3.68. His last time out earned a win against Pittsburgh, six and a third innings, giving up four runs. Had a lot of base runners in that game, but was able to strand a bunch of them. So uh, he's, he's had some base runners during the course of his starts, but he's been able to wiggle out of a lot of jams, and that's why he's having a good year. 26 years old, 6 feet, 195, out of Taiwan, four years in the Japanese league. Ford keys to success. He's got a sneaky, quick fastball, and he throws strikes. Boyne lays down a bunt. Chen flips with the glove and makes a fine play for out number one. As a pitcher, that's not generally the way you want to try and start the game is making a play like that, but Chen played it perfectly. That's only option was to play it with the glove, and then it becomes dangerous with the flip, but stayed with it beautifully and made a nice play. So he's good and loose and ready to go now. Yes, he is. He's got his heart racing already. Fastball 88 to 93. Again, sneaky quick at times. Can run it in on right handers, slider, change up, and a curveball. Knows how to pitch. Hits the outside corner for Martin Prado. The scouting report I saw him on him was predominantly fastball change up to righties and fastball sliders to lefties. And, and like you said, Joe throws a lot of strikes. This is Chen's rookie season in Major League Baseball, but he's no rookie. Born in Taiwan, pitched for the Chinichi Dragons in the Japanese Professional Baseball Leagues. He's been a real boon for Baltimore. They had real bad starting pitching last year. But Chen's off to a good start here in 2012. Prado has the first hit for the Braves. That equals the total last night. Exactly. Warm day. Let's hope the ball's flying. In today's game, we're participating in the home run challenge. Every homer hit today raises $20,000 for prostate cancer research. You can make a pledge by calling 800-798-CURE or go online to pcf.org. Here's Chipper. Top four guys in the batting order today were a combined two for 22 coming into this game against Baltimore. So when Bourne and... Prado are being held in check. That makes it harder on everybody else. And that might have been the best swing Chipper's had since he came back from the disabled list. Best swing I've seen him take in a while. Oh, it's the first one I've seen him take in yeah. probably two, three weeks. So. <laughs> Don't rub it in. <laughs> no balls in a strike. Because of Chipper's injury, in part, here's an amazing number for you. Chipper's last run batted in for the Braves was May 18th. And that came in a game here against the Marlins. He was hurt the very next day when the Braves played down in Tampa Bay. So he's been on 24 for a while. Let's hope he has a big Father's Day Sunday here in Atlanta. Good day at home here for the Braves before they go on this road trip would be something that they need because they've fallen a game under 500, 15 and 16. And they have been shut out six times in the last 13 games, and three of those have been here at home. Ground ball towards short. Should be and it is an easy double play for Chen and the Orioles. No score in Atlanta. We're through one inning at Turner Field.
brought to you in part by Academy Sports and Outdoors, by AT&T, by Delta Airlines, and by Ford. We are a scoreless after an inning, and glad to be with you on Father's Day. Hope you have a chance to wish your dad the best on this most special of days. The crowd at the ballpark for the homestand wrap-up with the Baltimore Orioles. Good start for Delgado. Through strike one to two of the first three hitters he faced in the game. Now faces the very tough and talented Adam Jones hitting 307 for the year. We talked about Colby Rasmus when he was in town with Toronto about how far up in the box he stands way off the back line and Adam Jones does too. Although not as close to the plate as Rasmus. As you can see he's a good foot up in front of that back line. He will in a second. So Tommy is a pitcher. How if at all does that change your approach on the mound. Well you know I think it depends if he's doing it if he does it all the time then. Then I think you don't pay as much attention to it if he's doing it specifically against a certain pitcher then. I think it tells you that he's either looking for a sinker before it gets sink it's before it sinks or he's looking off speed so then you'll. You pitch accordingly to that. You know, but you don't you don't see too many guys nowadays with that front foot in front of home plate most guys. Are as deep in the box as they can get because they want to let the ball travel as long as they can. Good yeah, pitch there by Randall on a one and two count. Ran the fastball in on him. Good to see him pitch inside. Well, that's one of the things that, you know, I know read I read from Randall coming off his last start with the Yankees is he felt like in that game. With all the walks and the high pitch count, he felt like he he gave those guys too much credit and wanted to get back today of going out there and be aggressive and, and pitching to contact and pitching to the strike zone and and early on here he's done a good job of that. Line drive to right and that's well hit. Jason Hayward will have to play that one off the fence, but it bounces into the seats for a ground rule double to lead off the Baltimore second. This guy's already an emerging star, if you will. I mean, he's already established himself as a very good all around player, and he's only going to get better. And that's why the Orioles gave him a six year contract extension well in advance of his free agency. And when he's hitting the ball with authority like that to the opposite field, you can understand some of the accolades being thrown his way. So Jones aboard for a resurgent Wilson Bedemit, the former Brave, has six hits in his last ten at bats. And Mark Reynolds lying in wait. He too heating up for the Orioles. That's our Delta Airlines on deck batter. Here for Randall. This is where he wants to maintain that aggressive mentality. Even though you give up the leadoff double, and you don't want to start putting yourself in that defensive mode this early. And, and, and here, you want to try and get out, stay away from that big inning like we've talked about, and stay aggressive. And he is quickly ahead of Benham at one ball, two strikes. High fly to right. But the ballpark will hold it. 
Jones will tag at second. Hayward makes the catch. And his throw will roll through, but not in time to retire Jones. Benevitt advances Adam to third base with one out. Here is Reynolds. We invite you to join us for the July 4th week celebration here at Turner Field. Watch the Braves play the Cubs all week, and you'll enjoy two fireworks spectaculars July 3rd and 4th, both of them presented by Publix. Get your tickets now at Braves.com slash tickets or call 800-745-3000. Well, which Reynolds will we see? The guy that hits the ball out of the park or the guy that swings and misses? Rooting for the ladder. Yeah. Reynolds one for six in the series. Four straight years, this man has struck out 195 times or more. But not this time. He drives a deep right center. Hayward going back onto the edge of the warning track. Calls it in. Jones comes home to score. And Baltimore scores first. Not just that, but with the exception of the foul out to Martin Prado, there have been some hard hit balls and all the outs with the exception of that pop up recorded by the outfielders. Well, that's where you you you're trying to be as aggressive and and right or wrong from your last start, but you can't do it just at the sake of throwing strikes. You got to throw quality strikes. Ronnie Paul, he knows the catcher today. No Matt Wieters for the Orioles. One and two. Delgado has his first strikeout. He surrenders a leadoff double and the game's first run on a sacrifice fly. It's one nothing Orioles.
here at Turner Field. Welcome back, everybody. Tom Hart. Braves made a roster move before the game today. Brandon Beachy was placed on the 15-day disabled list due to a bone spur in his right elbow. He'll get a full workup MRI tomorrow and won't go with the team on this upcoming road trip. In his place on the roster, Todd Redmond came up from Gwinnett. He threw a complete game seven-inning shutout Friday night. He's available probably tomorrow as a long man out of the bullpen. And in other news, Jair Jurgens has been announced that he will return to the roster in time for Friday's game against the Red Sox, he's scheduled to move back into the rotation against Boston. Chip? All right, Tom, thank you very much, and a happy Father's Day to you as well. Great job with your reporting on the flurry of roster moves made by the Braves today. And uh, congratulations to Todd Redman, guy who has worked real hard in the minor leagues, has been a, a good pitcher throughout, 69 and 54 record in the minor leagues, and this is his first taste of the big leagues in terms of regular season, so we wish him well. So the timing was perfect too because his parents were in town to watch him pitch at Gwinnett. So how about that Father's Day present for the Redmond family today? Pretty good one. So Dan Ugla goes to work for the Braves in the second. Baltimore enjoys an early lead of one nothing. Ugla, Diaz, and Jason Hayward coming up. High pop. Hardy battling the sun. One out. That'll bring up Matt Diaz with the bases empty, and he's the subject of our SunTrust solid performance. Good numbers in interleague play. 328 average, and still hitting good against lefties. 333 average coming in with two homers, both of his homers off left handers. Five for 15 at the plate on the homestand. And behind, nothing in two. Matt had a big game against the Yankees. The middle game of that three game series, his bases loaded double gave the Braves an early 3 0 lead over CC Sabathia. And on an 0-2 pitch, how many times have we seen Matty do that? He went through a stretch where he wasn't getting a lot of playing time just because of circumstances didn't dictate a need for him to be in the lineup. Guys are swinging the bat pretty well. But in the last week to 10 days, more at-bats and more success. Well, and I think that's true of most guys. And, and, you know, that's always a tough job for the manager and something that Bobby always did so well when, when, when I was playing for him. Did a great job of keeping his bench guys active, getting them at bats consistently, and, and that's not always an easy thing to do. And and Matty, as good as he is as, as a pinch hitter, the more plate appearances he gets and the more comfortable he gets, the more dangerous he becomes. It's kind of weird to think of it this way, but it's almost like uh, you're getting them four at bats, and if they contribute something to the game, that's great, but you want them to make, you want to make sure that they're ready for that pinch hit appearance. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow or the next day, that might be in a real key spot in the ball game. I and away to Jason Hayward, who brings a modest hitting streak of three games into play today. He's the man that broke up Hamill's no hit bid last night. Thank you, Jason. Pops back our way, foul, one ball and two strikes. Did you guys see the note today in the media notes that this one hit shutout was the first ever thrown against the Braves while they've been in Atlanta? It isn't three no hitters. Right. That was the first one hit shutout against Hamill. So his best day in the big leagues, far and away, he said. That helped Baltimore even up the series at a game apiece. And three no hitters. 
John the Count Montefusco. Ubaldo Jimenez. And then of course Randy Johnson's perfecto. Good swing. Jason's hit in 11 of his last 15 games. He's another guy that's beginning to really come around. Brought his average back up over 250. Still scuffling against lefties, hitting under 200 against left handers. Nice play by the pitcher. And Hardy turns the double play. One nothing as we head to the third inning. innings in Atlanta and in the Orioles third it'll be Pierce Chen and Andino coming up and fresh off vacation I know Tommy was studying for our ATT U verse trivia question name the last Oriole with a 30 homer 100 RBI season I was thinking about this the whole time I was over there well, good because we're in a slump <laughs> first guy that comes to mind is uh, Tejada me too You guys know it's never, ever, ever the first guess. Right. Brady Anderson. How about Vladimir Guerrero? Yeah, was he still hit that many home runs when he was playing there? Good call. Will Clark, Rafael Palmero. Lots of choices for this Baltimore club. Here's Pierce. Nice pickup for Baltimore to get this guy in a cash deal from the Yankees at the start of the month. No place to play in New York. He had the option to opt out of his contract, chose to do so. Baltimore made a deal to get him, and he's driven in nine runs this month. Always had good numbers in the minor leagues with the Pirates. Just couldn't let, get that to translate in the big leagues because of a lot of injuries while with the Pirates. Kind of like that 93 at the knees on the outside corner there. That was nice. Nice and easy. And then the big breaking ball. Back to back strikeouts for Delgado. First out of the top of the third inning. Nice fastball down and away. You follow it up with a nice little off speed curveball. Didn't quite hit the spot that he wanted, but the change of speed was enough to fool him. And Good pitch right there. Good start to the third inning. So here's Wei Yin Chen. He's 0 for 2 at the plate.
Tommy you got any speculation as to why we're seeing so many pitchers break down. I, I don't know if it's that many more this year than in previous years. It just seems like it. Yeah I mean it seems like when they come they come in bunches and then it becomes a bigger story. I, I don't know. I've, I've maintained for a couple of years now. I think that you see more more guys in baseball that are throwers and not pitchers and you know when you you've got so many guys now that are throwing you know it seems like when you talk about an average fastball 95 miles an hour uh, you got guys that are throwing that hard max effort all the time your body just can't take it lined to short Anderton Simmons makes the play just before we went on air I was going through the injury list and I won't go through all of them but maybe we get a shot from our RoboCam. This is just a brief list on this piece of paper of pitchers in Major League Baseball who have had elbow or shoulder injuries this season. This season. That's it. That are either on the disabled list coming into this year or are on the disabled list now. And it's something Major League Baseball is obviously very concerned about. Stan Conte, the former Dodger trainer, has put it together a study and found out that in the last four years, Major League Baseball has lost almost 1.9 billion with a B dollars in salaries for injured players. Well, that's certainly, you know, that's certainly not the situation any club wants to be in. I mean, you know, you hate to, you know, it's always been one of the arguments about long-term contracts. You, you commit long-term and guys get hurt and puts clubs in a bind and, you know, it, it it's certainly that's certainly not good for anybody the players the clubs baseball anybody. No, it's not good for the game at all. And it makes you wonder how in the world are teams going to have anything left come August and September at the current rate of injury we're seeing around the big leagues. Chipper at third base. Takes care of Robert Andino. Delgado's retired six in a row, and he'll bat third with the Braves come up down an early run. Of the third inning, one nothing. Baltimore is your leader. Sunday Braves on Fox Sports South is brought to you by your Atlanta Hyundai dealers. Make every Sunday a Hyundai Sunday on Fox Sports South. Joe, Tom, Tom, and Chip with you from Turner Field, wrapping up the homestand. Braves hoping to take two out of three from Baltimore and get back to 500 here at home. The inning starts with Braves catcher David Ross. Bediment back at third base. David tries a bunt and fouls it away. One of the things about these injuries that are plaguing the Braves 
is that as hard as it is to try to manipulate for Frank Wren the, the roster and for Freddie Gonzalez the lineup Braves are still only four out. So it's frustrating to think that gosh if we just had all our guys you know maybe we'd be four games in front in first place. So I, there's a silver lining to this and that is that the Washington Nationals haven't exactly run off and left you. But you'd still like to have your team put together to see how how good you really are. And while you never want to see any of your players get hurt. There's been no sense of finality to some of these injuries. It's no. been while well, he's hurt. I don't know when he can play. It might be three days might be four. So you can't disable somebody. And bring someone else up to replace that body on the roster. And then as a result, you're playing shorthanded. Right. For two, three, four days at a time. You're right. And, and it's hard to get, obviously, when you got guys hurt in and out, hard to get uh, any continuity going. I was looking at one of the notes in the Braves uh, here today. Twice this season, they've won five games in a row. Two occasions, they've lost four in a row. Their longest winning streak was six, their longest losing streak is eight. And that's very indicative of not being able to have a lineup that you can put out there day after day. High drive by Ross. Davis has a good arm. Don't waste any time, David. And he has the third Atlanta hit. First time the leadoff man's reached today for the Braves. And that'll bring up a red hot Andrelton Simmons. He's our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot. Good numbers, and he's having a good series. Three for seven with a homer. And he's hitting well against lefties, too. But to finish your thought, Tom, uh, with respect to those. Streaks when the Braves had their really good run in, I'll say, in the early to latter part of May, they did have everybody mm -hmm. on the field. Give you a sense of what could happen. Right, it shows you what they're capable of doing, no question about it. But you're right, it, it's it's frustrating. Uh, it's hard to get a good feel for things day in and day out. But again, at the same time. You're right. You look up. You're only four games out, and, and and a lot of times when these guys start coming back, it's almost like, hey, we've we've made a trade. We've added this guy. Yeah. Uh, it boosts the morale, and, and and it just it's. Simmons got a hanger and pops it into shallow left. It might drop, and it will. Ball bounces away from Pierce, but no further advance for David Ross. Fourth hit of the series for Simmons. A blue pit has runners in first and second with nobody out. This was a big swing too. Top hand came off, so a big loopy swing that fooled Pierce, who's a first baseman, also by trade, and he didn't get a real big jump on that. I'm not sure that he would have anyway. Good opportunity here for Randall to help himself out, get the bunt down, get the guys up, and hopefully get a big base hit from from Bourne or Prada. Yeah, I said drive in a couple of runs. Well, he could do the next best thing, and that's set up Bourne to drive him in. Baltimore is not a good defensive team. They've made 57 errors this year, but none in their last 45 innings. So keep an eye on their defense on this play. As Paulino nearly lost that pitch. One ball, no strikes. Now I'm sure this this is a, a situation that, to be perfectly honest with you, this infield probably doesn't have to do a whole lot in the American League. So right, we'll see what. You know, I know a lot of times when you don't do this a lot, you just go with the simplest play, which is, you know, your your third baseman is going to react to the bunt, and you're going to try and get probably out at first base and, and and give up the sacrifice. But when you're not doing this kind of stuff a lot, you don't tend to see as many pickoff moves or the wheel play where you're trying to get that lead runner. Well, one of the things they're doing that's really odd to me is. They've got the second baseman and Dino standing at second base really holding David Ross close and Hardy's way over toward third. Then as soon as Andino squares, I mean excuse me, as Delgado squares, Andino's got a race to first base. That's a long way to go. This sort of tells me that they think that they can get an out at third base. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to get the out at third base. Same play is on. It's butted back hard to the mound in the throw to third. Throw to first. It's another double play. And now the ball gets away at second. And Simmons is streaking to third, and he'll stop there.
What's going on out here? Well, they did have it set up to have Hardy cover and cut down the lead runner. And they get two. And Dino thought he'd be a pull off his tricky booger play and it didn't work. It didn't work so well. But another nice play by Ken off the mound. Well, the people around the Orioles camp told us this guy knows what he's doing. He's been in the Japanese big leagues for four years. He feels his position. He knows how to pitch. He knows how to set up hitters. So far, we've seen good evidence of that. That's a 1 6 4 double play. And the throwing error by Andino moves Simmons to third base. And the Orioles have turned three double plays in the first three innings of this game. Well, he had a lot of base runners his last start, as I said before the game, and he's had his share already today. So a day after Michael Bourne's career high 14 game hitting streak came to an end we'll try to start another one today. He was thrown out trying to bunt in the first and now has an 0 2 count. I like his fastball. It's 90 91. But it's done with what you were talking about earlier, Tom. Very little effort. It's yeah. coming out of his hand nice. Just easy gas right there. It's deceptive because he doesn't, it looks so smooth, it gets on you in a hurry. A tapper back to the mound, and Chen protects his 1 0 lead. The Orioles' defense has turned three double plays in the game so far, and Baltimore up a run. Cash in a second inning run. They've taken a one nothing lead with only one hit against Randall Delgado so far. And they're here from Albany, New York. Hey, and she's even got the uh, Twitter account, right? That's it. Katie Tesquay, I believe, is how you pronounce it. Outstanding. Here with her boyfriend. He's over in another section, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we're here from Albany. You got it. She's been here for all three games of the series. Always good to see our Twitter friends here at Turner Field. Delgado's thrown a lot of strikes, 28 among his 37 pitches. He set down six in a row and goes through the two, three, four spots for a second time here in the fourth. Tom, I hear you talk about front leg a lot with uh, with pitchers and using the front leg. And I see Randall at times really spin 
over his front leg to the first base side and that's not a good thing is that right no that's right you, you know a lot of times when guys are doing that they're either trying to overthrow or their timing is off and that's when you see the pitches either up in the zone or sail off to their arm side very difficult for a guy to try to throw that kind of slider that Randall just threw throw that you know fastball down and away on the outside corner if you're not getting out getting out over your front leg that's how you throw downhill. Is it a hard habit to break. No I don't think so I, I think first and foremost you have to be conscious of it and then once you become conscious of it you have to do some things to try and and make yourself feel it so that you can repeat it more often. You know a lot of times what you see guys do is throwing uphill where they'll get behind the mound and they'll throw so that their foot's landing on the upslope mm -hmm. and you know if you don't throw over that front leg and you're throwing uphill you're going to throw balls over the catcher's head. So what you try to do is get the guys to do that. Make them realize well in order to throw the ball down you have to get over that front knee and feel your your whole upper body and everything following over that front leg so that everything's going towards home plate. And then the, the byproduct of all that is you end up in a good fielding position you can help yourself. Chipper at third throws on the run and gets J.J. Hardy. Seven straight retired by Delgado. There's your first down. Here's Davis. Mentioned uh, the other night it's been an interesting year for Davis. Former Texas prodigy. The Orioles gave up Koji Uehara to the Rangers last July as they made their push for the playoffs. Davis pitched a game for Baltimore this year. Not only pitched in relief in an extra inning affair but won. I watched that game. That was, that was a crazy game against the Red Sox. 17 innings I think it was. Oh. Mm -hmm. And became the first American League position player to win a game as a pitcher since Rocky Colavito did it. I felt bad. I felt good for him that he won the game because I felt so bad for him for the game he had offensively. I think he went 0 for 8 <laughs> made 9 or 10 outs because he hit into one or two double plays and had three or four strikeouts. And I'll tell you what that first inning that he came in <laughs> he was bringing it. He was, was throwing 93 94 but then when he went out for the second inning it was like 86. <laughs> <laughs> Two balls and a strike. That's why you got to save that pitching stuff for the athletes. Exactly. Right, Tom? Exactly. <laughs> I know it looks easy, but it's really not. Back to the point about uh, the front leg. I remember Greg Maddox. He said this to me on more than one occasion. I heard him talk about it. he took his chin. Where he wanted the ball to go in or out, mm -hmm. which to me backs up what you're saying. High flip from Prado, but Delgado managed to get the backside of the base. It would be very hard to make to, to spin off like that if you're driving with your head and his, and as he said, his chin to his target. Yeah, and I think you know that that worked for Greg, and I agree with it. I think sometimes that's a little bit. Complicated when you're talking to guys that aren't of Greg's caliber. Uh, you know, I always felt like to make it a little bit simpler, it's like playing the infield. You step where you want to throw, and if you step where you're trying to go, then it's that much easier for the rest of your body to follow. If you're trying to get your chin to go to home plate, but you're stepping towards first base, it's not going to happen. Diving play, Simmons. Long throw. What a play! Big league play here, folks. And the arm to back it up.
that play from Andrelton Simmons. And fans, let's get Chipper Jones into one last All-Star game. Vote up to 25 times for your future Hall of Famer and the rest of your favorite Braves like Ugla, McCann, and Bourne for the 2012 MLB All-Star game in Kansas City. Vote now at Braves.com slash All-Star. And, of course, the All-Star game will be seen on Big Fox from Kauffman Stadium. Second time through for the Braves against Chen. Let's see if they have better luck. Already have four hits, but three double plays certainly have hurt. Breaking ball, one ball, two strikes. I think that's the first one of those he's thrown today. Uh -huh. they don't throw too many of them, but good spot for that one right there. They signed him to a three year deal and an option for one more. And didn't have to pay any kind of advance fee to negotiate either. Let's take another look at that play at short, Tommy. One of the great things about Anderson Simmons, unlike a lot of shortstops, he's 6'2. He's got long arms. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a big kid, and you know, a lot of times you worry about kids that guys that big having the range, but he certainly showed he has it, and like you said, he's got the arm to back it up. Not sure who's responsible for signing Chen, but David Stockstill, his brother John Stockstill, are director of player personnel and the director of international operations. Their executive director of international recruiting is a name familiar to folks in the National League and that's Fred Ferreira Remember all the players he used to get with the then Montreal Expos mm -hmm. and another name that Tommy will recognize is their director of pitching development Rick Peterson oh yeah that's right I forgot Rick was there and they knew they had some work to do I mean last year the Orioles I think had the worst ERA in baseball that's not the case this year Pitching is much improved, especially in the bullpen ranks. Yeah, their bullpen numbers are great and very similar to what, what the Braves did in 1990 going into the 1991 season. Fly ball to right. Davis had a little trouble at the last moment, but puts it away for out number one. And here's Chipper. George Power customers can get a free at home energy audit performed by an energy expert from Georgia Power. Learn how to save money and energy around your home to schedule an in home energy audit. Go to GeorgiaPower.com. But as I was saying, very similar to what we did in 1990 going into the 1991 season. You look at Baltimore since September 12th of last year, they're 17 7 and 2 in their 26 series, and they've gone 49 and 33 in those 82 games. So. They clearly started to see a little bit of a turnaround at the tail end of last year, which gives you the indication you've got a good nucleus of players, some guys you can build around, and, and they certainly have carried that good feeling at the end of last year back into this season and have, have gotten off to a very good, very surprising start. And they've needed it. It's been a long, long time since the Orioles have had a winning season. Last time was when Davey Johnson managed this ball club. Well, as you were reading those numbers to us Friday, Chip, about how many games they've finished out over the last five or six years, you talk about some long seasons when every year you're, you finish 35 games out of first place, and it starts in May where you start really accumulating that deficit. Boy, oh boy, is it a long season. 1997, the last winning year for Baltimore. And you're right, Joe. They finished 39 out one year, 36 and a half, 35. Last year, 28 games back. That's uh, it's not a lot of fun when your season is mathematically over by Memorial Day. And it can happen quickly in that East. Absolutely, it can. It got Chipper to hit in the double play in the first inning after Chipper had 
a couple of really good cuts, big cuts early in the count. And then when he got to the two strike count, Chipper had to be a little more conscious of the outer part of the plate. He zipped him inside with a fastball and jammed it. And that was a slider. Or what looked like a slider. Yeah, seems, a curve. seems to be going a little bit more to the curveball slider here the second time through the lineup. And he lost him high. First walk. Chipper support in front of Dan Ugler who popped out to short his first time. You mentioned those double plays the Braves have hit into Chip, including one by Jason Hayward that occurred in the second inning, and that's the first one Jason had hit into this year in 216 at bats. A strike to Dan Uglo. Yeah, Hayward was the second toughest man to double up in the National League. Michael Bourne's first, Drew Stubbs of the Reds, now second. You saw where he went on the disabled list. I'm not sure I saw for what injury, but the Reds have gotten hot again and they've won five in a row and Increase their lead over the Pirates and Cardinals to four games, but they've lost Stubbs for a couple of weeks. One ball, two strikes. Stubbs out with a strained muscle on his left side. Thank you. Obliques for the position players, elbows and shoulders for the pitchers. Seems to be the injury routine in 2012. And Ugla fights it off. And hammies. You might want to yeah. talk to Matt Kemp about a hamstring injury or two. Well, gets back to my theory. If you're a little overweight, you can't pull fat. So, yeah, you know, you can work out too much. Exactly. Why do you guys look at me when you say stuff like that? I didn't look at anybody. I was just looking in the field. I cut my eyes over there, but I didn't take a full <laughs> glance at you. <laughs> That's all you have to do to get a full view, Joe. <laughs> Macedonian physique of yours. That's took me 47 years to get it just the way I like it. Two balls, two <laughs> strikes. And Dan is retired on a 78 mile an hour off speed pitch. Two outs. That's what you call hanging a curveball higher than high. A little bit too high for a Dan to be able to do anything with it. If you want to hang them, this is where you want to hang them. Way up there because you get Fooled a little bit more by the speed, and it's hard to stay on it when it that's high, when it's that high. If that ball broke about two or three inches down, that's going a long way. First strikeout for him too. He got Matt Diaz down nothing and two, and then served up a base hit. And another good cut. Baltimore's won seven of their last ten games, but has actually lost a half game in the standings. The only reason for that is the Yankees have been blistering hot. New York's won eight games in a row and nine of ten in the AL East. Baltimore trails New York by a game and a half. The Yankees are in Washington today. We'll keep an eye on, an eye on that score for you. Well, I don't know if the streak by the Yankees is any indication or a barometer, but all eight games have come against the National League East, starting with the Mets, a sweep, then the Braves, a sweep, and they've won the first two against the Nats. They're nine and two in interleague play, and Baltimore's eight and three. Two out. 
two quick strikes to Matt Diaz. Fly ball right center field. Davis gallops over and makes the catch. Nothing doing for Atlanta in the fourth. Still one nothing. Baltimore leading. Top of the fifth inning, and it's time for today's Academy Sports and Outdoors leaderboard. Starters, ERA in June. Unfortunately for the Brave starters, that hasn't translated to a lot of W's because the offense has gone to sleep. Again, six shutouts in the last 13 games. And Delgado, another example. He's allowed one run and one hit, and he's into the fifth inning. Braves have four hits. They've hit the three double plays and trail one zip. Sharply hit, but foul down the left field line. Two balls, two strikes. Good grief. That's hooked over the Braves' dugout foul. How in the world did he do that? Change up. One out. And Delgado's retired ten in a row. See the Braves face the Diamondbacks and Nationals when we come home from our brief six game road trip. That's Tuesday, June 26th until Sunday, July 1st. Take advantage of Coca Cola two for $30 Tuesdays, Publix Friday night fireworks, and kids run the bases on Sunday. Visit Braves.com slash tickets today. Fly foul off to our right off the bat of Mark Reynolds.
One of the things that I think from a hitter standpoint makes Randall's change up so effective is that long arm action that he has. It's virtually the same as his fastball in, in appearance. Well, that glove comes at you, the long legs are coming at you, the long arm, but the ball just doesn't get there in time. Yeah, that's the key to a good changeup is make everything look like your fastball and Randall does a good job of that and I think the added benefit like you say with his long arm swing that he has with his fastball I think it makes his change up that much more deceptive that he's able to have that same arm speed. Oh, no. No. On the appeal no swing. One ball two strikes. Nice to see this kid break through against the American League. Delgado does not have an interleague win yet in his career. And Reynolds giving him a fight in the Orioles' fifth. That was a mistake. Bad breaking ball, but again, a bad enough mistake that all Reynolds could do was pull it foul. in the midst of a challenging part of their schedule. They have the Braves, then the Mets on the road. They go home and play the Nationals. That's their natural rival in, in, in interleague play. And they've got the Angels and the Indians. Then they head west to Seattle and Anaheim before the All-Star break. And there's the strikeout we were looking for from Reynolds. Fourth of the game, two outs. Pitch there after a steady dose of off speed pitches, both sliders and change ups. Throw that fastball on the inner part of the plate just above the hands. Tough pitch to catch up to, and especially after you've seen a steady dose of off speed pitches. Ronnie Paulino is the catcher. He was the first strikeout victim for Delgado today. He looks at ball one. Chipper at third. The long flip across in plenty of time. 12 up, 12 down for Delgado. Needs the bats. Down a run. He had a very busy day. A little housekeeping out in the Braves bullpen, and this was the scene immediately before first pitch. Closest to the pin contest, and the winner was Craig Kimbrell's father, Mike. The prize, a brand new Harley from his son for Father's Day. They rode it out of the bullpen and presented it to him right before first pitch today. Craig always competes in the closest to the pin contest, but he doesn't always give away a Harley. And guys, I don't know about you. I had a tremendous Father's Day today. I hope you did as well, but no one gave me a bike. No bikes for me yet. 
and thankfully my kids are smart enough not to give me one because yeah. there'd just be injuries involved. Yes, mine too. I don't even want to talk about bikes and injuries. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Neither are the trees on the greenway. But yeah, that's yeah, another yeah. story. And those aren't even motorized. That's what's really scary, isn't it? <laughs> Bottom of the fifth inning. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Hope you'll take time to pick up that phone and wish him well. I know I wish I could. Jason Hayward starts things off. Lin Chen is pitching a beauty. He's gotten some defensive help. Three strikeouts. Or three double plays, I should say, and a strikeout. He's only walked one man. He's scattered four hits. I'll tell you, Chip, I did call my dad already this morning and wished him a happy Father's Day. And I miss your dad every day and said hello to him and happy Father's Day to him as I walked in today because of that big picture here in our booth. Hayward grounds out to second, broke his bat. And one away in the Braves fifth. Here's David Ross. Would have been kind of fun to see Dad ride a Harley, huh? Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure fun oh. would be. I don't know how you start this thing. <laughs> In his dolphin coach's shorts. Yeah, it's just a mental picture that. <laughs> you can leave the booth now, Joe. Fly <laughs> ball down the right field line. Home run distance. But just oh. foul. Just foul. That would have tied the game. Nice catch, but he was sitting on the wrong side of the foul pole. Yeah, he should have framed it on the other side. Yeah. Ball just kept carrying. Yeah. That dad may have a tough assignment today. It looks like he's with two kids. Yeah. But they had two baseballs. I wonder if they got one during batting practice. Good point. Because it looked like one of the sons said, uh, so what do I do with this one? It's like I'll put that over there with the hot dogs. Because <laughs> he just made a great play. The young man to his right had a baseball in his hand just before the catch. No, the cotton candy. Bring the cotton candy over here. <laughs> I've got a baseball. <laughs> It is so fun to watch this game sometimes through the eyes of the children who are at the ballpark. That young man very excited today. And a little low, one ball, two strikes. Now two and two. Chen wears number 16. I believe that's the same number as another pretty good left hander the Orioles had for years, Scotty McGregor, who didn't throw as hard as Chen is throwing today, but certainly effective. Boy, was he good. We've been talking about their, their struggles over the last several years and their records and everything. And I'll be frank with you, I've never been an Orioles fan. And I think it dates back to the times where they just beat us to death when I was with Seattle. We never won a game against Baltimore because they were flat out good. But you pull for teams like this who have been down and out for so long. Once they leave Atlanta, of course. Yeah, how about that pitch? Two outs. What worked for Delgado against Reynolds may have just worked for David Ross, or against David Ross, I should say. Two outs. Definitely gone to that breaking ball a little bit more here. Second time through the lineup. See if he deviates from that again, third time through. And you're right, Joe. I agree with you. That's one thing about baseball that I'm hoping continues to trend in the direction of which you're speaking. 
you played in Kansas City during an era where the Royals were as good a franchise as there was in Major League Baseball. Baltimore in the 70s. One of the great franchises in Major League Baseball. The Orioles on their way back. It's been a longer process for Kansas City. But if those franchises are good, then you know the big markets are mm -hmm. probably going to be good, and that's ultimately good for everybody in the sport. Pittsburgh, too. Yeah. You know, they're having a good year. You just hope they are able to sustain it. Simmons pops it up at a shallow right center field. Davis comes in, glasses gleaming, puts it away. And Chen has worked his way through five shutout innings in Atlanta. And he leads 1-0. Braves on Fox Sports South is brought to you in part by the Georgia Lottery, by Jamison Inn, by AT&T Universe, and by Ram Trucks. Back in Atlanta, you see our score one nothing. Randall Delgado's pitching a very, very good game, but getting no offensive help. This game kind of reminds me of his start May 3rd here at home against the Phillies. Remember, that was the day after the Braves mounted that incredible comeback against Roy Halladay. That ball game, Randall went eight innings, gave up two runs and six hits. Atlanta was shut out by Joe Blanton, who threw 88 pitches over nine innings. It's about a two-hour game, too, as I recall. Two hours and two minutes. So let's hope for history to not repeat itself. The part of the split infinitive as we head to the sixth inning. Pierce, Chen, and Andino coming up. Is that what that was? I thought that's what it was when we showed the umpires today, but it's okay. A strike to Pierce. Well, you need innings out of him today. He's had trouble getting past the sixth inning in most of his starts, and he's set up well here to do this with the bottom of the order coming up. So hopefully it's something he can attack this bottom portion of the lineup, get through it, get into the seventh inning, and get some offensive help. Well, look at this. I mean, he walked six his last time out against the Yankees, and look at his uh, splits on his fast his uh, strikes and balls already. Well, Seventy pitches, fifty strikes. He said he wanted to be more aggressive today, and he's and he's done it. And you know that'll go a long way to keeping your pitch count down and giving you the chance to get through into some deep innings. Line drive to left. And misjudged by Diaz. It's over his head. And Pierce on his way to second. Unfortunately, there's just no place to hide when this happens to you. You just misjudge one on a, what was a low screamer, and the ball just took off on him. And there's just too many wide open spaces in the outfield when something like that happens to you and you know, you'd like to hide. A 
Only the second Baltimore hit. And now Chen will try to bunt. Matthew Kaminsky, the ever clever Braves stadium organist, plays my way as Wei Yin Chen. Did you hear what play. he played for Matt Weeders the other day? First the punt. Delgado makes a good pickup and gets his man. Run at a third one out. Matt Weeders came to the plate. He played man eater by Paul and Oates. She's a man eater. I'm glad it wasn't the weeder of the pack. No, it could have been. All right, runner at third, one out, top of the order coming up. The infield for Atlanta comes in for Robert Andino. And a balk. It's 2 0. Delgado balks home Pierce. And Freddy Gonzalez would like an explanation. Nobody else saw it. None of the other umpires. But Rayburn bounced out from behind the plate. Let's see. He was in the windup. Yep. The ball. That's, That's the ball. 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 Yes, it was. So Pierce scores 2 0. Base is clear now for Andino. Fortunately for Randall, that'll go in the books as a, an earned run because of the way Pierce got on base. But right now, nobody feels worse about that than Matt Diaz. Now, three balls and a strike. The inning started with a Pierce line drive that Matt broke in on. Ball sailed over his head for a double, then a sacrifice, then the balk. Now outside ball four. He missed by the slimmest of margins. One on, one in, one out. And that's the first walk of the game. We invite you to plan a boys' night out at Turner Field with the new Braves Buddy Pack. Get as many as 12 tickets to a game, and every ticket comes preloaded with a $15 credit for food and drinks. Visit Braves.com slash buddy today to get your buddy pack tickets. It's a good trip. Yeah, very good. Calm him down, slow him down, regroup. Still very much in the game, two run game. You don't want to have a little mental lapse here because you're upset with yourself about the balk and turn this into a, a bigger inning than it is two, two, two nothing lead still extremely manageable but you don't want to lose focus here and give up a walk and a home run and next thing you know you're down four nothing two leadoff doubles allowed in the game by Delgado both of them have scored and that's the only offense to this point here's Hardy He's popped out and grounded out. This is an Orioles club that if you can get the ball on the ground, they are double play hitting fools. Baltimore's rolled into 73 double plays this year, including four in game one.
Up the middle, the runner was going. That might help. It will help. Double play. Called it. Hard slide by Andino, his former Marlin teammate Dan Ugla, with the glad hand as the Braves out of the top of the sixth inning. What a play on this line shot by Jones, speared by Simmons to end the fourth inning. And I mean, he sprang to his feet and gunned it to first base. That was a Coors Light freeze can brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. And Chip, we received a tweet about it. I'm not sure what beast mode means. But I get that this is why we chop things. Braves do indeed have a keeper in Edelton Simmons at shortstop. He's lived up to the billing, that's yes, for sir. sure. Extremely uh -huh. athletic and plays that position very well. Sixth inning, Delgado, Bourne, and Prado coming up. And Chen misses outside, ball one. Can swing the bat a little bit now. He's six for 21. Broken bat toward third. Bedevitt's got it. One out, top of the Atlanta order now. Horns punted for an out, and he's hit a comebacker for an out. They're still third in the National League and runs scored, but boy, they have been hard to come by lately. 16 straight innings without a run. Coming into this inning, dating back to the sixth inning of game one of this series. Well, and a lot of times you want to tag that on the offense struggling, but sometimes you just got to give credit to the guys that you're facing. And you know, saw a well pitched ball game last night, another one today. And this is one of the tough things about interleague play. When you don't see guys very much, it's tough to get a gauge on what they're doing. You don't know what pitches to look for. 
in crucial situations. You don't know what guys st out strikeout pitches are. You don't know what they tend to do when they get in trouble. And it doesn't matter how much you hear that stuff in a scouting report until you can get in the batter's box and witness it firsthand. There's still a level of distrust that goes along with those scouting reports. And then in the case of the Braves in the next series, it's be careful what you wish for. They saw Sabathia. They saw Kuroda. They didn't see Phil Hughes, but those are the three pitchers we'll see starting tomorrow night at Yankee Stadium. Line drive the other way for Bourne. And that'll bring the tying run to the plate potentially for the Braves and Martin Prado. Boy, did he wait and wait for that breaking ball. Looked like he threw it at Michael a little bit. And then a little bit of an inside out swing. Yeah, it did come back out over the plate, but he did a great job here. Got the foot down, but the hands didn't go with him. Kept his hands back and nice serve out into left field. Martins one for two. Talking about this guy being a strike thrower at the beginning of the broadcast. The last each of the last four years he's had a three to one strikeout to walk ratio. Only one walk today couple of strikeouts. That's really good. You can get two to one you're you're doing something good three to one something pretty special. And he pitched for his country, Chinese Taipei, twice in the Olympics, once in Athens, the other in Beijing. That one might have slipped a bit. Two balls, no strikes. Paying a lot of attention to Michael over there at first base, which, as we've talked about a lot, good for Martin. Anytime you can take attention away from what, what Martin's doing in the batter's box and throw him a mistake, that's good for the Braves. Yeah. At the knees, two and one. I pop shallow right center. Davis has been busy today. He handles cleanly for the second out. Third time around for Chipper, and going back to the comments I made in his last at bat. They've started him with fastballs, and he's had some good cuts and fastballs, and then they go to off speed stuff, maybe even the count up, and then try to put him away with something biting in on his hands. But if they third time do the same thing the third time with a fastball, he might catch up to one. Looks like they're going to try. Fly ball center. Jones, though, is going to have room. He squared it up, but drove it to the deepest part of the yard. Good call, Joe. Bad result for the Braves.
So down 2 nothing, heading to the seventh. Still leads by a two nothing score. They'll have their three, four, and five hitters coming up against Randall Delgado. We've had a few moments to think about our AT&T U-verse trivia question. Name the last Oriole with a 30 homer, 100 RBI season. I'm going Brady Anderson. Chip. I'll go uh, Vladimir Guerrero. I'll go with Tejada then. I wanted to say Melvin Mora, but nobody would go there. Didn't yeah. matter. You're a big help. Sorry. Aubrey sounds like a French name, too. I'm surprised you didn't even <laughs> have that one at the top of your list. Uh, I should have guessed Juan Pierre. That would have been wrong, too. Yes. Would have been just as good as the three week answers we gave. So Gretchen got us again. And it's Father's Day. She was tough. It's just. Just not right. Here's Davis. Chris is 0 for 2. Hitless so far here in Atlanta. One ball, two strikes. Got his uni, he's got his sunglasses. That kid's ready to go. Swing and a miss by Davis. That's the fifth strikeout for Delgado. Good start to the seventh. Went upstairs for another strikeout here and painting the corners. Well, maybe right on the edge. Well, I swung at it, so it doesn't matter. Good pitch though, elevating the elevating the fastball, get him to chase. Tough pitch the layoff. Here's Adam Jones. He was not born and raised an Oriole. Line drive into left center field. That'll drop in front of Michael Bourne. Jones with a big turnaround first. We'll stop there. When you build your ball club, you sign the right free agent, you draft and develop good players, you have to make good trades too. And the Orioles may have made one of the best trades in their franchise history before spring training in 2008. I got George Sherrill, Chris Tillman, Cam McColio, Tony Butler, and Adam Jones in a deal for left handed pitcher Eric Bedard. And Joe mentioned when we talked about this on Friday how good a pitcher Eric Bedard is and was at the time of that trade. It just didn't pan out for him in Seattle. Yeah, he's one of the premier arms in the game. But Jones perhaps on his way to superstardom in Baltimore and cornerstone of this franchise's apparent turnaround this year. 
and he was a number one pick. The Baltimore Orioles knew exactly who they wanted included in that deal because up to that point he had hit 291 in the minor leagues for Seattle with 67 homers in five years with a high of 25 in 2007. So he was just getting to that level of breaking in with Seattle. And the Royals made a good trade. Wilson Benamit is 0 for 2. That one caught a corner. Two balls and a strike. Chad Durbin loosening in the Braves pen. Well, Joe, we've seen everybody in the American League East. With the exception of Boston, that's coming up on the road trip. Can Baltimore stay in this thing? Yes. Yeah, because they've got a good ball, uh, good bullpen. They've got to catch the ball better. You got to play better defense. And right now they're, they're playing with two first basemen playing in the corner outfield spots. So they're a little short there at the moment. But if they play a little better defense, absolutely they can stay in it. And one of the reasons why they're playing those first basemen out there is Nick Marcakis. Yeah. And he's hoping to be back by the All Star break. Marcakis, a Terrifically talented player. Won the gold glove last year, had hamate surgery in his wrist. Good pitch from Delgado has Benamit in a full count. Time for a strike him out, throw him out, double play. We've had other varieties today. Simmons to Ugla, close play. He came across the bag beautifully. Even with the runner going and Jones bearing down on Dan Ugla, Atlanta turns another double play against the Orioles. The rules change with this guy. He's not willing to just get one run or get one out. He wants them both. A perfect day.
Good pitching, great defense. Now the Braves' offense has to get to work. Down two nothing here in the bottom of our seventh inning, and the right guys are up: Ugla, Diaz, and Jason Hayward. Today's ball game wraps up our series with the Orioles. We look ahead to the Yankees. We'll face New York tomorrow night. There is our Jamison in upcoming schedule. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the new Yankee Stadium. I know you've been there, Chip, and have raved about all of its amenities, but I don't know if the Braves would be willing to rave about this Yankees team that just swept them here. They were all close games, though, all real competitive close games. The Braves had that chance to win the game against Sabathia in the middle game of that series and should have won it. So I expect it to be another good series. Yeah, I think they're going to look forward to going up there and turning the tide a little bit. Like you said, they had an opportunity to to win a game or two in that series and let them get away. So I think they're going up there with the with the mindset that they let they let a couple get away here in Atlanta. They want to go up there and turn the tides a little bit up there in New York. Well, let's see if the Braves can get Randall Delgado some runs. I mentioned earlier that this game reminds me of that start against the Philadelphia Phillies. Look at this amazing stat that Gretchen Caney found for us. Two runs or fewer while he's been in the game in nine of ten his last ten starts. That'll make you pick at the strike zone a little bit. Yeah, well, you're starting to you're starting to pitch a little bit, thinking that one run's going to beat you. That's a tough way to go out there and take the mound. But he hasn't today. He's been aggressive. He's gone after these guys and certainly pitched the kind of game the Braves needed him to pitch today. So hopefully the offense can get things going here a little bit with their last three at bats. Dan Uggla's 0 for 2. He's popped out and he struck out. Wei Yin Chen has been as good as advertised. This man came in 6 and 2 in his first season with Baltimore. And he's leading with a shutout bid working into the seventh. One ball, no strikes. Dan very upset with himself when he struck out his last time up on a high hanging breaking ball. He'd like to get a little payback himself right here. That ball scalded and into and out of the stands. Two and two. Ball tomahawked over to Benham at a third, and there's the first out. We're watching that curveball, Tom, from up here, it looked like he had that wrist double wrap. Yeah, he's got the definitely the curveball that he wraps it a little bit, tries to get it to go more 12 to 6, and that's the second one that he's hung to Ugla, and it's just you say it looks really good, but it's too high to do anything with it. Blow it outside to Matt Diaz, who has singled and has fly to right. Molino took some punishment. Tough cookie too. I remember when these guys with the Pirates talking to some people with the team Pirates team at that time. They said they were willing to put Ronnie Paulino against anybody strength wise in the National League. Thought he was the strongest guy in the National League at that time. But that one got him on the toe. And to the left side, J.J. Hardy. And nice stretch by Reynolds at first. That's the second out. 
just looking at Paulino's catching here, though, as we were showing him, you know, all catchers these days seem to have those like double flaps out on their feet so that their toes are covered when they go into their catchers. Crouch, he doesn't. He doesn't. He might tomorrow. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> <This> he might. <laughs> Still wears the old style catcher's mask, too, I think. Yep. Batting helmet turned in reverse. And right now, Chen is mesmerizing the Braves. And it has one hit since the third inning. And there's the second. Two out single for Jason. That extends his batting streak to four straight games. Like Michael Bourne before him did a good job of going the other way against the lefty. Let's see if David can pop one and tie this thing up. Two nothing Orioles were in the seventh. He popped one today, just couldn't keep it fair. Yeah. At the belt to call strike. Chen's given up eight home runs this year. Six of them solo homers, and the other two were two run homers. Hardy at short, flips to Andino at the second base bag, and that retires the side. Chen continues to dazzle. He's beating Delgado and the Braves. Nothing.
is brought to you in part by Georgia Power, by Sherwin-Williams, by Toyota, and by Academy Sports and Outdoors. We've completed seven innings in Atlanta. It's the Orioles leading by a two to nothing score. And Joe and Tom, it's time for our Coors Light cold hard fact today. Late inning heroics for the Orioles. As you see, most home runs from the seventh inning on in Major League Baseball. Brewers, the only National League representative in the top four. They have a ballpark that's conducive for that sort of thing, too. Yes, they do. Ninety two pitches for Randall Delgado today. And he's quickly ahead of Mark Reynolds, who knocked in the first run of the day on a sacrifice fly in the second inning. I know Mark Reynolds strikes out a lot, and there's Good reason for that because he's got a huge swing, but his point of contact is so far out in front. It, there's no wonder that he hits a bunch of homers because he starts early. Except there. Randall still has good velocity. That's a sixth strikeout. And fans, we invite you to stop by the Braves Clubhouse store at CNN Center and ask how you can receive a set of Braves Turvis tumblers as a free gift with purchase. That's while supplies last. For complete details, stop by the Braves Clubhouse store at CNN Center or call 404 523 5854. Up the middle, Dan Ugla will take care of Paulino quickly. Two outs. Tommy, Friday night, Brian McCann hit a double. He had to hustle into second base, and he had a Turvis Tumbler type of slide. <laughs> <laughs> that, drew, that drew a few laughs out of the dugout. <laughs> Brian was standing at second base laughing. <laughs> well, when you do something like that, all you can do is laugh at yourself. Yeah. I mean. Maybe this will be Delgado's final inning. His spot is due second on the lineup card when the Braves get to their half of this eighth inning. It was thought that Eric O'Flaherty may be available tomorrow. He's actually up in the bullpen now. That's good news. Sure is. One of those injuries that has lingered for the Braves, but no ability to resolve it until he proves he can either pitch or can't. And he's apparently good to go today. As Pierce bounces one foul off the Orioles dugout, one ball, two strikes. Reason for the fans to be the umpire. He deked him. He started tossing the ball and put it in his pocket instead. Out of the right side. Pierce is still alive. Little high. And Delgado will look in at DJ Rayburn. Sherwin Williams painting the corners. Another bouncing ball over the mound. And Ugla will take care of Pierce. Randall Delgado went eight innings today, gave up two runs, only three hits. But his offense has him behind.
Chen. The Orioles starter went seven shot out innings in his first look at the Atlanta Braves here at Turner Field today. And he'll give way to Darren O'Day. He's the first man out of this very tough Baltimore Orioles bullpen. Check out that batting average against 182. Left handers 171 right handers 188. And that's not submarine that's somewhere below that. <laughs> yeah from the Braves perspective you're thinking all right we got 10 out of there we get into their bullpen but this bullpen has been pretty darn good all year long. Leads the major leagues in ERA. This guy here, are you saying O'Day hasn't hasn't a lot of run in 23 of 28 appearances? So they got their work cut out for him on the back end of this bullpen. Braves eighth starts with Andrelton Simmons. Juan Francisco's grabbed the bat. He's in the on deck circle with bat for Randall Delgado. How do you hit this guy? I don't know. Not too many people seem to have the answer. Like that. He took him the other way, a leadoff single. There's a start in the eighth. If we could just run Andrelton up here to the booth, he could explain that for you. <laughs> I'm not sure I can. But he did stay on it. He didn't bail out. Like he had an idea of just trying to take him the other way. Good start to the inning. Close the book on Delgado. Eight innings, two runs, three hits, a walk, and six strikeouts. And Buck Showalter with two left handed batters coming up in order for the Braves. We'll go a bit deeper into his bullpen. Troy Patton will stride in, tying run in the batter's box for the Braves, who trailed 2 0. Out Juan Francisco coming on to pinch hit. The Braves now have a left handed reliever to face out of the Orioles bullpen. And we've seen Troy Patton already in this series. He worked the ninth inning of game one, faced Hayward, retired him, gave up a single to Simmons, and then got Jack Wilson to hit into a 1 6 3 double play. And it looks like Jack's going to get another crack at it. So Francisco the decoy he's taken out and was announced as a pinch hitter so indeed it will be Wilson. Good work against the Orioles. He 
bunts it foul. Strike one. And let me correct myself. It wasn't Jack that hit into the double play. Jack had hit a triple. You might remember pinch hitting in the sixth inning of that game, and then it was Eric Kensky who pinch hit in the ninth and hit into the double play. Jack one for six as a pinch hitter. Pops this one up on the right side. Reynolds. One out. Now the top of the order. Here's the lefty lefty matchup. Bourne versus Pat. Tenders just 10 for 56 against Patton, the 179 average. So O'Day and Patton have done a good job of setting up. Slow roller hit toward Hardy at short. They'll get the lead runner. Simmons slides hard, but is the second out. And now Martin Prado. That second run that the Orioles got on the misjudged line drive and then. Ultimately, the ball. Boy, that was a huge run, as it turns out. So, Patton, a nice job. Gets two outs in the eighth inning. Buck Walter playing matchup. Will again go to the bullpen. Third pitcher of the inning. Two nothing your score. Orioles still lead it. In the eighth inning, the Orioles bring on their fourth pitcher of the day, and he's been a real find for the Baltimore club. Pedro Stroke, 26 years old, claimed off waivers from Texas in a transaction that really turned out to be a trade. Mike Gonzalez went from Baltimore down to the Rangers in September of last season. This guy was originally a position player. And after three years in pro ball, they converted him to pitching, and there's good reason for that. His fastball, 97 to 99. Stroke born and lives in San Cristobal of the Dominican Republic. And his first pitch right at the knees at 95. Might be some similarities to he and Anderson Simmons, who was drafted to perhaps become a closer. Wow. That's not fair. 0 oh 2. Sherwin Williams painting the corners. You got Martin to flinch. Mm -hmm. So when you see 95 on the first pitch and the next one starts right at your belt buckle and it's hard not to flinch on it and give up especially when you haven't seen him much. 
Hardy at short. Flips to second and that retires the side. Braves put the leadoff man on in the eighth inning but can't break through and still trail 2-0. Through eight innings. And time for our ATT call to the bullpen after a terrific start from Randall Delgado. Eight innings of two run baseball will give way now to right hander Chad Durbin, who's on a terrific run himself. He's got a great stretch of scoreless appearances, working 17 straight. I mean, yeah, he's had good stuff lately. And I need to ask him, I'll have a chance to here in a little bit when we get on that Delta Charter, about his slider versus a cutter. He's been throwing a ball that running in on left handers a little bit. We might see that against the pinch hitter here. It's not breaking like a his typical slider, but just about look like three or four inches kind of flat. Yeah, I mean it, it, it gives him something that he that he's got a little bit room, more room for error. When you're anytime you're throwing a breaking ball into a hitter. It's you're, it's dangerous. You've either got to keep it on the outside corner and backdoor it, or you got to get it to finish in off the plate. And and both of those, your margin for error is not very good. With a cutter, it's a little bit shorter. He can control it more. If he misses, he misses on the hands. Typically, not going to hurt him. So I think that's a great addition for him. Nick Johnson pitch hits for the Orioles. O'Day, Patton, and Strope work a scoreless inning of relief. And now Johnson. Singles to start the ninth. Don't forget after our ball game coming up on Braves Live, presented by AT&T. We'll hear from Braves skipper Freddie Gonzalez. We'll get sound from the clubhouse, and we'll anticipate the upcoming Yankee series, series as well as take a look at today's highlights. Ryan Flaherty is the pinch runner at first. Oh, almost got it. Very close. Dino's 0 for 2 with a walk. Flaherty, the pride of Franklin, Tennessee, and a former Chicago Cub farmhand. And out of Vanderbilt, leads from first.
And Dino didn't like that call because David Ross, I think, was set up outside and had to move inside to catch that breaking ball, so it looked a lot worse than it actually was. Tom Hart tells us that Flaherty played on that terrific Vanderbilt team that had Mike Miner and David Price. I was asking Mike about that team the other day. I said, and you guys, did you go to the World Series? And he said, no. I said, Super Regionals? No. Didn't get out of the Regionals. I thought I'd probably, that was probably a good place to stop. To stop, yes. Questions. <laughs> what happened? Mike pitched great his last time out. He takes the ball tomorrow night at New Yankee Stadium. On ball one strike to Andino. And that just missed. That might have been the makeup call. Sherwin Williams says that it got a little paintbrush part of the Zone. As the old adage goes, they're trying to give you an out. Take it. Let them. There's the bunt. And a wide throw, but Dan Ugla handles from Martin Prado. One out. And out time called. Ross, Prado, and Durbin will talk about it with J.J. Hardy coming up. Popped up. Will it stay in play? David Ross gives chase and won't have a chance. Now one and two. Everybody in the National League East is losing again or has already lost. Phillies. Lost at Toronto six to two. Ground ball toward short. Simmons glides to his left. Flaherty to third now with two outs. And Chris Davis is the scheduled hitter. And Freddie Gonzalez will play a matchup as well in the ninth inning. Dermot allows the leadoff hit. And so far, that's it. Runner at third, two outs. Chad departs, and 
to the bullpen we again go after a break here in the ninth. The Orioles and it's good to see this man answering the AT&T call to the bullpen. It's been a bit of a frightening time for Braves fans wondering what the fate of Eric O'Flaherty's elbow would be but he's in this game against the Orioles. He hasn't pitched since the first game of the homestand which was the night that John Smoltz number was retired if you want to think back about how long ago that was nine days ago. It's not the same doing side work either, is it? No, it's not. You can certainly get a gauge for how you feel, but nothing, nothing, nothing simulates game action like game action. And a good try as he misses outside and low to Chris Davis. And I'm sure that Freddie probably would have liked to have gotten him in a, in a less stressful situation than this right here, but there's a big run out there and. This is the guy you want. Broken bat grounder to second. And O'Flaherty puts out the fire in the ninth inning. Braves trying to snap a 19 inning scoreless streak. They're down 2 0 as we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Today's Toyota play of the game that occurred in the seventh inning, top of the seventh, one out, runner moving on the play. Andrelton Simmons still goes to second to get the lead runner, and a great turn by Dan Ugla turned it into a double play. Great work by the guys up the middle to get out of the inning in a beautiful double play, the second of the day for Atlanta. 
But now a real tough assignment down two runs with three outs with which to play. Braves have to face the Orioles closer Jim Johnson who's 1 and 0 with a 126 ERA and 19 saves. Had a streak of 25 straight saves snapped. June 2nd and was the delivery man of the month for the month of May in the major leagues. Very good work out of their bullpen. Ryan Flaherty stays in the game. He's in right. So it starts with Chipper Jones. This guy throws hard. Mid 90s, 94 to 96. And a good change up. Rolled to second. There's the first out of the ninth. One of the qualities I've always said Tom that a closer has to have is a guy who throws strikes. Here's one of those types of closers 28 innings five walks 17 strikeouts so he's not getting a strike out an inning he's making you put in play but he's around the plate he's around the plate he's got good stuff good command and you don't have to strike guys out when you have good stuff and good command you get a lot of bad swings. Way in Chen started for the Orioles, went seven, shot out innings. O'Day, Patton, Strope, and now Johnson have followed. Braves have seven hits in the ball game. They had four hits in the first three innings today, but three double plays. One in the first, one in the second, one in the third. Really put the Braves batsman behind the eight ball. He's a big guy, 6'6, 240. Strike three on a breaking ball. Well, that's just a tough pitch right there. Get the hitter to buckle his front knee a little bit, and nothing he can do about it. And got to tip your hat right there. That's a yeah. good pitch. Good pitch. Matt Diaz, the last hope for Atlanta. These pitchers, these types of pitchers, drove me crazy because of their short arm action. It was tough to get a real good sense of timing. He's throwing like a catcher. Bring his arm back after he takes it out of the glove, but not very far. And then the, it seems like the pitch comes right out of his right ear. Now the Braves down to their last strike. Baltimore Orioles have blanked the Braves 2 nothing today's final score. Johnson saves his 20th Chen wins his seventh and Randall Delgado the tough luck loser for the 10th time in 11 starts the Braves score less than two runs.
for the young Atlanta right-hander. Disappointing finish to the series and the homestand. Orioles.